say we were going to have a son. But he said he was going to be great. He was going to lead our people back to God. He was going to make a path for the one we had waited for. It was too much for my heart to bear. I remembered the waiting. 
the disappointment. How can I be sure? I said to the angel, full of doubt and full of fear. Those were the last words I said until I held him in my arms. My son, my John. John lived his entire life in the same manner that he came into mine. He made a path in the wilderness. He made way for the promised one. In the temple that day, John found me in my wilderness of doubt. <laughs> my desperate heart and my weary hope. And he made a path. the Lord was revealed in my darkness. The heart of God displayed. The promises of God came true. Prepare the way of the Lord. Prepare the way of the Die. To rise again. And 
And anyone who asks me about those stories, I would gladly share them because, oh, a mother will share stories about her son any day with joy. But I also have the story of this incredible God we serve and his power. And I will gladly share that as well. I especially like it when they tell me that they want to hear about what it was like on that night when the angel came to me and told me I was highly favored and do not be afraid. As I repeated those words to myself every day of my life. When I went to Joseph and I told him what was going to happen in me and through me, I said those words. On that journey to Bethlehem, when I was due to deliver and I was riding a donkey, I said those words. And when all those inns shut their, do their doors in our faces because there was no room, I said those words. And I said them when I laid in that bed of straw and it gave birth to a child. I said them over and over again. God loves you, Mary. Do not be afraid. God loves you. Some people want to know what it was like when I watched him walk away from our home for the very last time. I said those words, do not be afraid, when I heard the rumblings in Jerusalem. When I watched my son being beaten and tortured, I wish I could tell you I was never afraid. I wish I could tell you I never felt unworthy, but I did. Because I'm human. Just like you, we have those times of fear and doubt. It's just part of being human. But just like we have those fears, and just like Jesus came to me, he comes to you. Because you are also highly favored. So do not be afraid. <laughs>
My father taught me so many things. He taught me to love the smell of fresh cut wood and the feel of a tool in my hand. He taught me to make things that were useful and beautiful. He told me the stories of our people, told me proudly that the promised Messiah would come from our very own family line. I was amazed, but removed. I never thought that I would be a part of it. But holding my infant son in my arms that very first time, looking down into his small face, I realized that I'm a father now. This boy would become a man, and I would be the one to teach him. I would tell him the same stories, but it would be much different than before. This time, I wasn't removed in any way. All of the stories would be about him. They had always been about him. I would hold him tightly to my chest. He was so small. So much was on those infant shoulders. Really none of it made sense. When Mary would come to get him to feed him, it was hard to let him go. We weren't perfect. We made mistakes. One day when Jesus was 12 years old, we accidentally left him in Jerusalem. When Mary and I realized our mistake, we were frantic. But we found him in the temple with the teachers. Mary was the first to speak, but I was the first to spot him. And when I saw my boy standing there, not a boy, but a young man, it stopped me in my tracks. He was asking questions that I had never thought of and giving answers that healed a part of me that had been broken for a long time. You see, he was my son, but he was so much more than that. I had always known who he was, but I had never fully understood who he was. See, my son was the old stories, yes, and now, now he was telling new ones. Yeah. 
was a boy, I used to play king in the field. This rod in my hand would turn into a scepter. The camel hair cloak on my back would become the finest silk. And those sheep, those stinky sheep, they became my people, my adoring subjects. I governed, gave fine speeches, even settled disputes. It helped the hours pass, but at the end of the day, I was still a shepherd, a little brother, a kid, alone with some sheep. Not many people want my job, but that's not all bad. It's hard to explain, but there's something sort of special about caring for a flock. It seems you'd almost do anything for those sheep after a while. Why well, fought bears, climbed out rocky ledges, even helped a newborn lamb come into this world. It's good to be a shepherd, even if it is a little boring. Once, though, I saw something so amazing. I've never seen anything like it since, and, I, and I'll never see it again. It was late at night, and, and I was camped out, watching over my sheep. Suddenly, I saw the brightest light I have ever seen. I thought it was dreaming, except that it felt like that I had woken up for the very first time ever. It was an angel. When all this happened, I fell to the ground. I thought I was going to die. But I didn't die. Instead, the angel spoke to me. He said not to be afraid. He could practically hear laughter in his voice when he told me, I bring you good news. He told me a baby has been born, the Savior of my people. When my heart leapt and the sky erupted, it was all of heaven laughing and singing and swirling around me in worship. Well, I didn't even think of those sheep. I didn't look back. I went to find this baby. And when I held him and he wrapped his tiny fingers around mine, I looked down at his hands. I recognized those hands. Those were shepherd hands. A shepherd who would be king.
I have loved God my whole life. I have studied the law. I have said my prayers. I believe in the promise. I have seen his people suffer and stray. Oh, I have broken my heart. I call out to him every day as long as I can remember. Save us. Send us a Savior. God once told me that I would not die until I had seen the Messiah. I woke up every morning expecting. I studied law. I said my prayers. I believed in the promise. Every day, though I did not see him, I looked. That morning, I did not wake up slowly. Eyes opened in astonishment, as if they knew what they were about to see. These old legs, they became like new again as I left out of the bed and hurried down the street. All the while, the spirit in my heart was singing like a song to the temple. To the temple. Everything in me knew the moment I first saw him. It was difficult for me not to fall on my face on the floor and worship him. It was difficult for me to find the words to say to his mother, may I hold him? That small baby wasn't what I had expected. It was greater than I had expected. How like God to bring salvation in that way. That's all I needed. In him was a light greater than all the darkness. In him was a promise greater than all the lies. In him was redemption bigger than all of our pain, shame, and sorrow. Sovereign Lord, it is as you have promised. Yeah. 
made a sensible life for myself by making logical choices and strategic moves. I learned early on that the only thing a man can depend upon is himself. The world is unsteady, and a man can only steady it through hard work and right answers and good connections. This way of life worked extremely well for me until, until I saw the star. Until I saw the one thing that made no sense to me. I tried to make sense of it, believe me. My colleagues and I studied the astrological phenomenon in, days, for, in depth for many days. We knew it must have something to do with what the prophets were told of a future king. Finally, able to learn no more, we put away our calculations and packed for a long journey. We just needed to see where it led us. This was our first departure from logic. We inquired about the star with the king in Jerusalem, but he appeared to have no knowledge of its meaning or the one to whom it may have pointed. He asked many questions. We felt that he was threatened by the prophecy, which really only validated it for us. This was no small story if a grown king was scared. No ordinary baby if the night sky lit up for him. We continued our journey with growing excitement. We followed and let the light lead. I had never followed anything other than myself until that journey. One night, as suddenly as the star had appeared, it stopped right over a small stable. We looked at each other in astonishment. It made no sense for us to kneel down. It wasn't logical for us to take out the fine gifts we had carried with us and take them toward that humble place until I saw the child. Then it all made sense. A greater sense than me or my small knowledge or my life. I repented. I worshipped. And I returned home a new man.
did you first meet him? And what was it like? How did he come to you? Was it in a quiet voice? Or an eruption of angels that filled the sky? Did you know who he was when you saw him? Were you afraid? Or were you full of hope? When did you first meet Jesus? And what was it like? This is a season that we remember His story. The prophecies that told of His coming, His birth, and His life. That Jesus, that God Himself, found a way to come and be with His people. We remember that Jesus did not live a life apart. His coming affected everyone. He changed the lives of all of those around Him, including all of us. And so, this is a season that we remember our story as well. His impact upon our lives, the darkness, the doubt, the fear, the self-reliance, that have all been ours without Him. But then the light, the good promises, the favor, and the guidance that are all ours because of Him. So we come this season to Bethlehem, along with all of these other people that have loved Him. Zechariah, Mary, Joseph, Simeon, a shepherd, and a wise man. We come and we lean over the side of the manger and we behold him. We come full of joy. We come full of hope. We come and adore him, Christ the Lord. Now if you would, please join us as we sing these Christmas songs. <laughs>
Church friends. We are here because of him, and we are so grateful you came and shared with us this time of singing and worship. We pray that you are blessed as you leave. You are dismissed.